Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Team's Crafty Ink Spot. Pardon my voice. Um, I'm on the tail end of a cold. Thank God it it never turned into COVID, so I'm feeling blessed there. But I've got that lingering kind of thing going on, so pardon my voice. Today is a really quick tutorial. We are going to do a um, do-it-yourself gift box for wine bottles. Um, personally, I'm one of those. I'd love to bring a, a bottle of wine to a party or an event. And just handing them a bottle of wine like, Hey, I just grabbed this off the shelf at the store. Here you go. Eh, not not so cool to me. Well, I'm going to show you how we're going to wrap up that bottle and, and give it a little bit of a personal touch. It's a quick and easy technique, and I think you're going to like it. So let's just jump in. You only need a couple supplies. You need a piece of 12 by 12 designer paper. Pick whatever colors you want. If you want to do a white 12 by 12 and uh, stamp on it or, you know, uh, you know, we get all these beautiful designer papers and we don't always know what we want to do with both sides. So I'm going to use this one, which is out of the Bowser of Holly uh, designer paper. I'm going to go ahead and use the holly side as the outside, and that it'll, this will be our beautiful inside. So you need a piece of 12 by 12, you need some paper snips, you need uh, your stamp and trimmer, and score, because you're going to score and trim with this. You need either double-sided tear and tape, or your stamp and seal, if you're good at it. Okay, I have both here because I love my stamp and seal. But I think it hates me. I really do. We fight. We argue. But we'll give her a chance. Alright. And you'll need a bone folder. So let's get started. With your 12 by 12 piece. You're going to cut it down to 11 inches by 12. Now you might want to take note. If your DSP. You know. Has a design on it that faces a certain direction that when you're making this you may want to make sure that you're paying attention to how that's uh, laid out so you, you probably if you have a design let's see I think it would have to be at the top edge of your 11 inch anyway we're going to cut one inch off of this and since this is a universal pattern i don't have to worry about any direction so i'm going to cut one inch off and that gives us our 12 inch by 11 inch piece so now you need to score on the 11 inch side let's see let's see score along the 11 inch side well, let's see, that would be, I just turned that too many times and confused myself. Okay, here's the 11 inch side, the short, short side of it. Okay, we're going to score at one, I'm going to give you, it, 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 in the description of this, I'm going to have the instructions, the supplies, um, a PDF, and I'm also going to include a diagram for you that shows exactly how the cutting goes and everything. So that'll be in the blog post below. I did this tutorial several years ago and um, I couldn't find it anywhere in my paperwork or anything. So we're just going to redo it. All right. So we're on the 11 inch side at the top here. And I've got all these score marks listed for you. We're going to score at one and three quarter. Make sure you're using your scoring blade. So one and three quarter. Three and a half. Five and a quarter. Seven. Eight and three quarter. 
and ten and a half. That little ten and a half one's gonna be your tab. Okay? So now you're gonna flip your paper to the long side, the 12 inch side, and you're gonna score it at two inches. And then you're gonna move it and score it at 10 inches. Okay, now we put our trimmer aside for now. So now, you want to take and you want to burnish all of these score lines really well. I might have cut that one a little, but I think that's be trimmed anyway. Um, it'll just help it fold. And I tend to, when I'm doing folding, I fold... To what I call mountain in, which is the rib that your your embossing um, scoring tool causes. Um, I just tend to fold inward on that mountain in. It just seems to be a, a crisper fold. Yeah, I did uh, tear that one a little with it. Now, some of your DSP might be thinner than others, you know, so i going to not do what I just did, and I uh, scored it too hard. But I think I'm going to be okay, because I think that gets trimmed right there anyway. So we might be okay. Sometimes you can see your score lines better from the inside. Then we have this tiny little score here. Okay, you want to score on those other lines we did. Well, I did tear that one when I it. Let's see. Let's see if it survives. Okay, everything is burnished. Now, on the tablet I show you to remove in the blue these two little tabs that are on the side where that tiny little score is. So all you want to do is cut at an angle And then trim it up right on the score line. You're going to end up with a little tab. So I'm going to trim over here. And then trim straight up. And we have our tab there. Now, I think since I tore this one, and my paper is not directional. This is where you would try to decide whether or not you want this to be your top or that to be your top. So say like you had ornaments or something. You want your ornaments up at the top. Okay, where, where we're going to do the diagonal. I'm going to leave this one right here because this is going to be about my bottom. So now on the top, our top edge here. I'm going to show you an easy way to mark um, with a pencil in order to create these evenly cut out triangles. Okay, let me grab my ruler, I forgot. So you want to mark along the top. Line up your ruler. And what we're doing is we're marking the center of each of these little slats. Okay? So we're just going to grab a pencil. And um, 
we're going to mark it 7 8. Come on. I can't read my messy. 7 8. And then you mark it 2 and 5 8. So 1, 2, and 5 8. And 4 and 3 8. My uh, ruler is about wore out. 6 and an 8. 7 and 7 eighths. Boy, my ruler. I need a new ruler. 9 and 5 eighths. Can't even see the half mark on that. 9 and. Okay, we're real close right there. 9 and 5 eighths. And all that's doing is giving you the center of each of these little slats. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take from those little center lines that we just made okay, and you're going to trim from here's your line okay here's the little line that you made and you're going to go straight from that line down to the score mark see the score mark right there that's what you're doing just creating these little V's. So you'll go from the point of that down to the score line. And then just keep going all the way down the top of your sheet. I mean, you could probably eyeball this if you were good, but I had to, I had to measure mine. I'm not good enough to eyeball it. So I had this little cheat dot that we put on there to make sure I, I mean, I can cut straight to a corner. I'm doing okay there. Staying in the camera here. Almost got it. One more. And cut this one down the deck. Alrighty. We have got the top of our bottle done. Or where we're going to, you know, do our bottle. Let me throw this scrap away. Now on the bottom, on the diagram I'm going to give you, it marks what gets removed, what's just folded, and what's cut. Okay? On the bottom, we're just going to cut straight up. See where I tore that? That's going to be okay. So we're going to cut right along that score line. Right up to the other score line that we did. My hand's not wanting to behave today. This uh, cold weather that we're having just kind of wrecks havoc on me. Alright, we have our basic unit ready. What we need to do is add where we want to put our ribbon through here. So what I do again is I take a ruler and I'm going to use a quarter inch punch. That's just, uh, I don't know where my Stampin' Up! one is. But it's a quarter inch punch so that we'll be able to feed the ribbon through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'll lay it on here even. If, even if you had one of the square rulers, let me see if I have one. If you have one of these square rollers, these are really handy for doing something like this. So 
I'm going to line it up on the edge here. Come up a little ways. This will get me to get my dots in the right spot. Where, you know, my holes where we're going to be cutting. So all I'm going to do is eyeball it. Put little marks right in the middle of those. If you want, you could have, you know, gone right along the ruler. That was just a reference for me. We're going to cut out our little holes. I can see my pencil mark. Until I don't use this punch very often. Want to make sure you leave plenty of room on there. So when you thread your ribbon, you don't want to tear it. You know, some designer paper is thicker than others. This this one seems a bit thin. All right, we got our holes for our ribbon. Now let's put together the box. So you have your little tab here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use. Let's go ahead and try our Stampin' Seal. Let's see if she wants to be good to me today. If not, use your tearing tape. So you're going to go right along that little tab. I missed a little spot. Oh, looky there. She might want to behave. Now we're going to take our box and fold it right to that. Line it up. I usually just kind of fold mine in half and then it'll line up. And looky there. Oops, just stuck it to the table. My bad. I told you, she goes everywhere I don't want her. But I can take my glue eraser or my uh, emboss buddy and get rid of some of that tacky that's on there. But here's our basic wine bottle. Now to do the bottom. I went ahead and grabbed an empty wine bottle. I could, I should have bought, brought one with a flat bottom. For goodness sake. What was I thinking? Get one with a flat bottom, I'm just saying. Pull it in there. Right to your fold marks. Okay? Right to your fold marks. And you're going to do opposites of tract on your fold marks. Let's see if I can do this, but this, this bottle doesn't have a flat bottom. So I'm going to take my two opposites and attach them. So I need to put my stamp and seal on there. Hold it across to that opposite. Yeah, use a, a, a flat bottom bottle suggest see if I can get my hand in there and then roll it do the next two opposite You want to make sure you have plenty of tape on you. Oh, see, she's giving out on me already. So I think it's operator error. I'm just going to say it has to be. Let me see if I can get some pressure on this. And there we go. Look at that. We have our wine gift box. And that's what the bottom's going to look like in there. 
wine bottle in there. I don't know if a champagne bottle would fit. You may have to do a larger DSP. So we're going to take some coordinating ribbon. And we'll alternate going through the holes. So on this first hole, I'll go in. On the next lap, I'll go out. See what I mean? And then on the next one, we'll go in. We will try to go in. If I can hold my ribbon a little. In. <laughs> Next wrap out. And you can go as crazy with these as you want. You could decorate them up. You can even add another uh, tag to it, add another kind of gift tag to it, or a uh, gift card tag or whatever you got and then this one goes inward and you kind of just cinch up your bottle and tie a bow Let's see if I can tie a bow in this A ribbon. This was some ribbon I had left over from another project. So I don't know. We'll just coordinates with this. So there you go. And you trim off your excess ribbon. But there you go. You have a gift bottle all made up. You can put tags on there. You can put embellishments on there. But they're super quick and simple to make. And maybe you've got a real expensive bottle of wine from somebody. You want it to be a surprise for them to see. What a great idea for New Year's or Christmas. Wine and even cider giving. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will include a PDF tutorial on my blog that has all the measurements, the supplies, and diagrams you need to create this awesome little gift project. Have a very, very happy Stampin' Day and stay safe out there.